Hey everyone, it's Deke. Welcome to the Wraith YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing another delve. We're going to be trying the Mycomancer Cavern, and this is going to be the Great Scavenger Hunt variant of this delve. We're going to be doing it on Tier 8, and I'm actually going to be running a Ret Pally this time. Most of my videos I play Prot Warrior, and I just wanted to kind of get a feel on one of my alts of what is it actually like to be a DPS in these things, how difficult are they compared to tanking. So the eye level on my Ret Pally for this run is around 595. And I did find that early on, you know, with my warrior as prot, I was able to do tier eights at around 585. And I think with DPS, I would say 10 item levels feels about right in the difference where 595 is about where I think I would want to be to do tier eights as a DPS class. So I have Bran set up as a healer for this run. I have gotten some comments where people saying never run him as a healer. I disagree with this completely. I think if you're a player who's going into these delves under eye level for the recommendation, you're probably going to want to run Bran as a healer. Unless you're just an amazing player in the top 1%, you, nothing ever hits you, you play perfectly. I think heals are pretty important for lower eye levels in some of these because they can be very challenging. You take a lot of damage. And if you play around Bran's potions uh, that he throws out while he's heals, you can pretty much keep yourself up through most things. So I think heals are good for Bran until you're very confident with the dungeons or maybe your eye level is a little bit more comparable to the recommendation. Then I think you can start running DPS and you can kind of burn them down a lot faster, which is nice. But I think for players who are struggling or these feel very challenging, keeping Bran as a healer is gonna be the way to go. So for this variant of the Mycomancer Cavern, you have to do this set of tasks for the chef. You're finding ingredients. The first stage, you literally just jump in the water, swim around, and pick up a bunch of crates. There's nothing to that phase. There's no enemies to fight or anything like that. And then the second stage is gonna be getting some other ingredients from around the map. So for this stage, you probably just want to pull mobs as strategically as possible. You wanna look at your map and find the areas where you can skip stuff because you just don't really need to kill all these things. I will say that after you do the second stage, I think this is a four stage delve, which is a little bit unique, but after the second stage where you go around collecting these things, you are gonna have to come back to this platform that I'm currently on to get all these pumpkins. So it doesn't hurt to kind of clear this platform out. And you can see the mechanic in here. I'm sure there's this one and the fungal folly. I'm sure a lot of people do not like these delves because these spores are kind of annoying to deal with. But I've actually found that if you know how to play around these spores and you know how to use them to your advantage, you can actually just blow up an entire pack of mobs with the spores and then you it kind of they kind of do your work for you. you can see here as i'm using these jumping pads to kind of trick the spores so if you pull the spores onto all the mobs and you get them close you can also stun the mobs in the circles and then you get the thing close to exploding then you jump out of the circle for instance what i'm doing is using the side of the cliff jumping down you don't get hit and all the mobs just blow up and die so there's a lot of ways that you can play around with this mechanic to your advantage. I will say that these spores don't damage the bosses. So there are boss stages in a few of these variants. The spores won't kill the bosses for you, but they will pretty much kill all of the adds if you play them right. So just use your discretion on where you wanna try those mechanics. If you have a class with a lot of movement skills, it's pretty easy to kite the spores around onto the mobs, stun the mobs and the spores, and then just you know dash out. That's a really cool play style for these types of delves, these types of variants. So I would suggest playing around with that just to see if you can use the mechanics of the delve to your advantage. In this map, you are gonna be doing a lot of backtracking. So you end up, you use these little mushrooms to jump up and down on the platforms. And this whole map is just kind of a big circle. So you just end up kind of going around one way and then coming back around the other way to do all of the checkpoints. Like I said, I think there are four stages in this map. Might actually be five stages. But, you know, a couple of them are not combat related. So it ends up being around the same amount of time it takes to run this one as most of the others. You can see what I do here with the spores again. Aggro the spore, get all, or aggro all the mobs into the spores. Get the spores to explode. Use the mushroom to jump up on the platform. So you can do this either way. You can use it where you're jumping down or where you're jumping up to avoid the explosion. And what happens, the reason I'm doing it that way is because the mobs are chasing me and then they run into the wall, right? It's a, it's a stopping point, so it kind of gets them all to one location. Makes it really easy to blow up the spores on them. You don't want to get hit by those spores. They do a lot of damage. 
I don't think I got hit by any in this run. I'm not sure if they would have one-shot me or not, but I would not be surprised if you're under eye level if they actually just one-shot you. There are a lot of mobs in this delve, but there's not a lot of challenging um, mob encounters in here. There is one little mushroom guy that does shoot like a fungal bolt at you, and those are probably the, the worst of the worst. I think there have been some magic damage nerfs across the board in delves, so they're not quite as bad as they once were. These lizards will, at around 30%, go into a death explosion, so you just want to stay out of that. You'll see here, I will go and gather all these spores and try to just get the mobs inside of them so that I can do a bunch of damage. So you can see how much damage even the elite took a lot there. You can't just one-shot an elite, but maybe if you had three or four spores on top of it at once, you could. But I'm using that to my advantage. So the one thing you want to be careful of when you're doing this strategy, if you're trying to kite stuff around, is if, if you have a caster in the group, they'll just stand and cast on you while you're running around. So you really can't do that. You really want to stun that caster in, in an explosion, bring an explosion over to them and stun it, or kind of deal with the caster before you start the strategy of kiting stuff around in the circles. So you see there, again, using the spore to just kill the elite. Makes the, those fights a lot faster, a lot easier. The spores do a lot of damage. So this is kind of a stealthy little elite that spawns in these fungal scenarios. And this thing actually is pretty nasty. It has an effect here where it it goes down. You can see there that actually would have one shot me, except Bran healed me to full immediately. Fastest healer of all time. All the other mechanics of this are really easy. The shockwaves and stuff. But this one ability that it has where it just kind of burrows down onto the ground. When it pops up, it just nukes everything. this ability here and you see how wide that blast radius is i don't even know if you can get out of that i would suggest just avoiding this elite if you can i think you get the double jump mushroom off of this specific mob every time so honestly it's really just not worth killing the mob i would just skip it if you can so i took a death in this so again i think as dps these do tend to be a little bit more challenging than as tank just because the one shot mechanics are a little bit more powerful with where tanks you can mitigate that stuff you can use your shield walls and stuff like that so you just got to be a little bit more careful and again i pulled this thing and didn't really recognize what the mechanic was doing but once i see it i don't even think you can run out of that fast enough to avoid that explosion it's very very fast I'm pretty sure that those are the types of mechanics that over time we're going to see tweaked and nerfed a little bit. I think tuning overall in Delves is pretty good, but there are just these outlier scenarios where there's things that are just almost unavoidable that just one-shot you. But I do think that they'll be working on that. I think that's a side effect of them trying to, you know, just get the expansion out much faster. They're going to have to kind of go in and fine tune some of these mechanics as the game progresses, which I think is actually fine. I think the content is pretty good overall. It's really not too buggy, surprisingly, in the delve, so it just needs a little bit of fine tuning. So here's a really good example of using these spore mechanics to your advantage. We're going to stack up three on top of each other, and then they just nuke all the mobs. After they blow up, they have a, a little intermission before they really start going off again, but you can just keep doing this because they, they never actually go away. Pull the mobs into it, blow them up. Definitely helps to get these things down a lot faster and you just don't have to deal with them for so long. You can see here's another lizard that's got this explosion. You can just run away from that. You don't even have to DPS them down or anything. We'll finish up that leg of the quest there. We're going to circle back around and finish off this elite that got me earlier. That's one of the nice things about these uniques that if you get them down, they don't regain their health. So you can always come back and just finish them off. You'll see here I do get the double jump mushroom, which heals you when you double jump. 
I really just don't find that to be very good. Maybe players that are just constantly jumping their characters, they will say differently, but I don't do that, and I don't... I just don't find that power to be very good in these. Just looking around to figure out where our next objective is. One thing you'll notice is you see the little checkpoint stone over there. It looks kind of like a summoning stone. You do get an extra life now when you reach that, which... I don't think that was really necessary. I think groups were struggling and maybe that was the impetus for including this feature with the extra life. I don't find that I really die often. I mean, I died once in this delve on this character. I mean, this is one of my first tier eights as a DPS class. So I haven't experimented that much with DPS in delves, but still, I mean, one death, you've got five deaths, I think in these tier eights. Now that count does go down in the higher ones, 9, 10s, and 11. So getting an extra life there when you only have three to start with might be nice. You'll see here that there are a couple of casters that are casting this rotten bolt on me, and you can see how much damage I'm taking here. So these are the pulls that tend to be kind of scary. Don't be afraid to just use your CC on one of these things. If you're a mage, you can sheep one of them. For instance, what I could have done here is just spec into repentance and then, you know, just taking one of them out of the fight. So occasionally you will kind of get into pulls like this and you you might die on them and you just have to kind of reassess and come back and figure out, you know, how you're going to handle the pull. I actually really like this about Delves. It reminds me of how it felt back in like Burning Crusade just doing dungeons. Things were hard. You needed people, you needed one person in the group CCing something so that you could actually get the pulls down. And that was actually kind of cool. I mean, it was hard and sometimes it could be frustrating and sometimes groups couldn't even do dungeons back then. But I'm kind of happy that we have things like that where people may be thinking, man, I should take my CC talents or, you know, I want to use these skills that I don't really typically use when I'm, you know, just DPSing in a dungeon or, or in a raid or something. So I think delves are actually really good content and they're very valuable to the game in terms of getting some more dimension to classes and play styles. So I'm actually really happy with that. I'd be interested to hear what you all think about Delves. Are you seeing these things that I'm seeing, like these maybe unique play styles or playing around mechanics and stuff like that? So love to hear that in the comments. So we're on to the last stage of this variant here. And unfortunately, I did somehow pull this mob from the top and you see how it's got the long blue line? The empowered thing is stretching all the way up from that top thing. So this mob never kind of loses empowered. So if a mob is empowered by Zekvir in a delve, it can't lose it. You can't kite it out of it or anything like that. And as a matter of fact, one tip is that if you move a mob that doesn't have empowered into the Zekvir zone, that mob will become empowered. So that's something to avoid. But I really didn't want to have to fight this mob. I had been trying to avoid it the whole time. Just because these big elites just have so much health. And you really don't get that much XP for Bran off of killing these elites. You know, you get a lot off of the little uh, curios and chests and stuff you find. And then you get a lot when you complete the delve. But... I just try to usually skip and avoid some of the big elites if I can, but once something aggroes you, it's just never gonna leave you alone. It'll chase you around the entire instance for the rest of the day. Shockwave. Okay, with that killed, we have the final stage of this. So it looks like, yeah, there was one, two, three, four stages in this. And this last one is just killing this boss, which on the beta was much, much harder. The spores on the beta I found were incredibly difficult to deal with. And he will spawn a bunch of spores off of his back here in a minute. This fight was really hard on the beta. I think I, I may have done this one on a nine or a 10 on the beta, maybe even 11. And it was extremely challenging, but on this aid, at least, the spores are not really that much of a problem. You just, they don't like land on you every time he pops them off. So I think that's something that they changed on the mechanic of this boss. I can't imagine it's going to be that different in the higher tiers. So you want to interrupt Swamp Bolt, which is easy. Your, your kick should always be up for that ability. He does the spore song. He spawns a bunch of spores. Just make sure you don't stand in them. 
you can kite the boss into the spores. He might take a little damage, but it, it, it's not really that significant. So I just kind of ignore that mechanic. And then he has a charge. Just move out of the way. He's going to drop some pools on the ground. Don't stand in the pools. Super, super easy fight. I did miss a Swamp Bolt kick there, and I think you get a debuff that ticks on you for some damage. So you really just want to kick that every time if you can. Just be paying attention to his cast bar. That's really... I just wasn't paying attention to his cast bar. Charging. Mm. He's not one of the bosses that has a mechanic that just does unavoidable damage that ticks on you for five seconds, which makes this one pretty easy. Most of the bosses that don't have some unavoidable damage mechanic, I find to be pretty easy. The, the mechanics of the bosses are pretty self-explanatory, dodging, interrupting. I'm not a Ret Pally Pro by any means. I'm sure my build is not optimal, and I'm probably not pressing my buttons 100% optimal either. So I'm sure there are people that play Ret Pally out there that would do this much better than I do, but Ret Pally has been pretty fun this expansion so far, so I kind of just play it a little bit for fun. Charging. Move. I don't think I'll be doing any crazy in-game content with Rep Pally, but... And there we go, with that, we finish the Delve, we finish this variant of the Delve. And we go get our loot. Let me know in the comments if you guys are enjoying this type of content, where I do full walkthroughs of each variant of the Delves. My plan is to try to get two or three of these out a week if I can, just to kind of give people a heads up on what you can encounter in the delves, what they look like, what they feel like, and just kind of give you like a full walkthrough of them. So yeah, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.